What is up RC enthusiasts? Today, I'm gonna be talking about the C44KM right here. I'm gonna go a little bit more into detail about how I set it up and how I put my electronics in here because I already had a build video on this. Sort of like a build video, like a follow, step, not a step by step, but kind of what I did, but similar style here. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you how I installed the stuff that I put in here. So that way, if you wanna follow my setup, you can. Let's get to that. Well, here you go guys, it's my C34KM. As you can tell right here, just a little bit of modification. I changed the red paint right here to silver, put some silver wheels on it or painted them silver. A little bit of the trimmings painted silver too, just to make it look cool. And if you look in here, you can see I did a little bit of detail a little bit, just a little bit of chrome in there as well, just to accent stuff, nothing too crazy. So there you go for that. Now let's get more into what I did to modify this my own way. Not too many differences from stock, but let's get into that. All right, now let's go underneath. This is what my setup looks like underneath my truck. So you can see I got the two speed. That's what this comes with, by the way, if you buy this C34KM kit, the kit metal version, they come with this two speed right here. And I don't know if you could tell in the picture, but I have electric tape wrapped around my drive shafts. I'll explain why I did that later on. But right now, let's go ahead and I'll show you pictures of how I was able to do this right here to get this transmission in a higher location. Now, as you can tell, when I put my truck down like this, you can barely see the transmission hanging lower than the side steps right there. So these side steps right here are pretty flush. See that? So that definitely takes care of my breakover angle. I don't get stuff hung up as much on the transmission like I used to on the stock location. So the pictures right here I'm going to show you. You're going to have to cut those up right there. You're going to have to cut this inner piece right here which is part of your interior molding. You're going to have to go ahead and cut that out. A little bit up here and under the hood. Oh, let's take this tiny battery I was testing with. So I do run anything in these rigs from these tiny little batteries, 650 milliamp hour, two cell lithium ions, all the way to the 1500 cell lithium ions and 1500 mAh lipos as well, two cell lipos. This does have the V3 in it, which could handle a three cell, but I don't use three cell on this really. I do use three cell in my B36 because I have that big cab in the back to put a giant three cell in there. But for here, I don't really own any small three cell lipos, so I have not run three cell on this yet. But it's capable of doing that. Oh yeah, and the other thing I forgot to show, that's all I was going to show right here is, I don't know if you can tell, but I got my speaker in there. You can see the motor up in there and the cutout for the motor, so it can sit in there. And I still do fit 1500 mAh lithium ions in here, no problem. And as you can tell right there, you see the servo leads for the speaker and the servo, shift servo and stuff. It's all right here. I had to cut that out to make it fit in there. That's how, I was, that's how I was able to fit the V3 board in here. I'll go ahead and take this part right here to show you how it lays in there. But yeah, all you gotta do for the two speed is make that little mount that I made for it right here. I don't have a measurement for it. I should measure it, but I don't have a measurement. I'll probably put one up here. And the cover that you see on the motor right there, you see that piece of cloth covering the motor. That's just to stop debris from getting inside the motor. So you don't have rocks and pebbles and sand getting in there when you're doing your water runs. And that way, your motor will last a lot longer. Now this gearbox is still all the original WPO plastic gears in there. They are pretty reliable. I don't plan on changing them. They do make metal replacements, but I have not needed to replace any of them yet. And as you can see right here, I have that little foam piece pretty much pushing on the shift servo right there so it doesn't skip that's my little fix right there very simple and it works really well shift servo is waterproof steering servo under here is waterproof as well and the ESC receiver v3 is supposed to be water resistant but I went ahead and waterproofed it even more with Plasti Dip. so now I've been able to run straight in water if you've been watching my videos and my only other mod to this really than the high lift transmission as you can see right here 
I've got electric tape over the drive shaft. I'm going to show you a picture right here why I've done that. And as you can tell, the rear drive shaft right here is too short after I lifted the transmission up this high. So that is one con I forgot to mention about this. When you do lift the transmission this high, you are going to have too short of a drive shaft back here. But I was able to hold it in place by doing this. And I just put a little bit of tape right here just so it still has the in and out flex. So you're not really relying on these to flex really. You're, you're, you're still using the drive shaft to take some of that slack away. Same with the front. I just wrapped the front one just to make it look just like the rear one, but the front one is actually long enough to be just normal. And the angle of it is a little bit steeper than normal, but it is not too bad and it's not binding or anything, so I'm not having any issues with it. If you watch any of my running videos, you can tell I do not have any issues with it. And it was already like that in that running video where I have this truck right here and that blue one in the background up there running in that video. So yeah, now the drive shaft's working. I'm not having any issues with them so far. A couple of runs already on them like this, and it's pretty good. And also for this setup, I'm not sure if I mentioned, I do have the wheel weights, WPL wheel weights, on all four corners. So that's the way they come when you buy the kit metal edition, KM edition right here. It comes with those wheel weights, so why not use them all, right? I mean, I like going uphill as much as I like going downhill, and if you don't have any wheel weights in the back, well, guess what? You're toppling this way. shock rods right here I'm not sure if you can tell but you can they're not screwed in all the way you can still see some tread sticking out so that's how I achieve a little bit of a lift from stock and that's pretty good that way only thing I do to my shocks people always ask me what kind of shocks am I running they look like they run really smooth only thing I really do is every couple of runs I go up in here to the shock shaft and I spray a little bit of penetrating oil into the hole right here and I just move the suspension around and I do that every now and then and that's how I was able to achieve a really, really soft truck. So no cut springs or anything like that. That's just set up that way. So yeah, there you go, guys. Very simple mods I did to this thing. I really just wanted it to perform better on rocks and stuff and not get hung up as much. That's why you don't see the transmission hanging so low there. Yeah, that's pretty much it for that mod. This is running the V3 system. I've used a 2S LiPo or lithium ion to run this truck. So nothing too crazy. And also, uh, waterproof it. All I did was put marine grease in the axles, marine grease inside the gearbox. I covered the motor, as you guys seen there. I plastic dipped the ESC receiver combo. And the speaker seems to handle water pretty well. So that's just stock the way it is, the way it came. And other than that, that's pretty much it, really. Nothing too crazy, right? It's just pretty much a stock C44 KM metal edition kit. And this is WPL's newest kit right now available. They will have more coming out pretty soon, so stay tuned for that. Start saving some money. But for now, hope you liked what I showed you right here, and I hope that helps you mod your truck. If you want it to perform the same way you see me doing in my little run videos, that's all I've done. So nothing too crazy. It's still pretty much all WPL right here. This is their design. I did not change anything. A lot of people like to modify these and make them look different and change them and everything. You know, that's probably something I'll get into later on. But for now, I do like the way they make them. I like the way it looks the way it is. So I just like to do performance modifications to make them run better. Other than that, they're great little trucks. Well, all right, guys, there you go. The C44KM. Hopefully you could follow that and build yours kind of like how I built mine. And hopefully you can get all the electronics in the same place I was able to get mine into. But anyway, yeah, that's how I put it together. And, you know, it's not too hard. Pretty simple little build. Uh, I don't really modify my stuff as crazy as some people do, but I do like to make it a little bit my own by lifting up my transmission and you know making it a little bit better at off-roading. So that way, I'd like to do performance mods in that sort of way, I guess. More performance than looks for me. So yeah, there you go, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that. And as always, don't forget, go out there, have some fun, be safe, and run that RC.